Oh, hello. I didn't see you come in. Now, today we're going to be testing for six different types of anions. But what is an anion, you may ask? Well, an anion is a negatively charged ion that is attracted to an anode during electrolysis. So, as I said before, we're going to be testing for six different anions. Let's see what they are. Come over here. The first one we're going to be testing for is carbonate. The next one we're going to be testing is bromide. The next one is going to be iodide. The next one is going to be chloride. The next one is going to be sulfate. And lastly, nitrate. Now, to test for these six different anions, we're going to need lots of different materials. The first one being a test tube rack and six thoroughly washed test tubes because we don't want any contamination. So make sure they're washed thoroughly. And now we're going to need a few more things to test for these. First thing's going to be ammonia. Next will be silver nitrate. Then hydrochloric acid. Then barium chloride, then iron 2 sulfate, and lastly nitric acid. We're also going to need some concentrated sulfuric acid which we're going to get out later. So the first anion we're going to be testing for today is carbonate. Carbonate here. And to test for this anion you can use any dilute mineral acid, but today we're going to be using dilute hydrochloric acid. So we're going to take our wash scoopula, scoop out just a pinch of the carbonate, put it into our clean test tube, close up the jar, and then we're going to get our dilute hydrochloric acid. I already poured it into this beaker. And we're going to get a few drops and put it in. Now, as you can see, um, when you add the hydrochloric acid, a reaction is taking place. The solution is fizzing vigorously, and carbon dioxide is being let out into the air. So the equation that it's going through is this. So, as you can see, we'll have carbonate, which is CO3, and the H+, plus, which will be the acid, and that will yield on a reactant side some water and carbon dioxide as a gas, which will be released into the air, which is what causes the fissing reaction. The second, third, and fourth test will be the halogens. So my partner had to go out to lunch, so I'll be doing the halogens, so bromide, iodide, and chloride. So let's begin with bromide and let's open up the container and make sure that everything you're using is clean. So use a clean scoopula and place some of the bromide into a clean test tube. Make sure to close the container. And then you're going to be adding dilute nitric acid followed by about three drops of silver nitrate. So about three drops and then, or a little bit more, and then three drops. And it should form this creamy yellow white precipitate. And later you'll see that to test the halogens you can use ammonia but we'll save that. And there's bromide. Bromide is a precipitation reaction, as are the other three halogens. So the silver nitrate will combine with the lithium bromide to yield a silver bromide and a lithium nitrate. So we're going to be doing iodide now. And again, you'll want to open the cap. And using a clean scoopula, put some into a test tube. And we will be adding dilute nitric acid and silver nitrate. And it should be forming a yellow precipitate. So we'll take the test tube and we'll add the nitric acid and then the silver nitrate. And it should form a yellow precipitate. And I will put the equation below. So there's our yellow precipitate and here's the equation. So the silver nitrate will combine with the potassium iodide, except in this case we are using sodium iodide, but the equation will remain the same just with Na instead of K, to yield a silver iodide 
and a sodium nitrate. So now we'll be doing chloride, which again, you'll be adding dilute nitric acid to, followed by the silver nitrate, and it should form a white precipitate. So let's scoop some out with a clean scoopula and place it into our test tube. Close the lid. And take the nitric acid and the silver nitrate. And below is the equation. We used calcium chloride for this example, but the principle in the equation is the same thing, that the silver nitrate will add to the sodium chloride and yield a silver chloride and a sodium or calcium nitrate. The silver chloride precipitate doesn't dissolve, whereas the nitrate will dissolve, and that's why you're left with the solid silver chloride that is the white precipitate. Now I will be adding ammonia to the three halogens, and you'll see how ammonia helps chemists distinguish between the three. All three halogens go through double decomposition, a reaction between two compounds in which each compound breaks apart to combine with another part of the compound. Here is chloride, which dissolves with ammonia, bromide, which partially dissolves with ammonia, and iodide, which does not dissolve with ammonia. So the next anion we're going to be testing, sorry, I'm back now, um, it's going to be <laughs> sulfate. So to test for sulfate, we're going to use, um, here's our sulfate, we're going to use barium chloride. You can also use barium nitrate, but we're using barium chloride. So we're going to take our clean scoopula, get out <laughs> just a smidge, put into our clean test tube, like so. Close up the cap. Now we're going to just take a few drops of barium chloride. As I said before, you can use barium nitrate, but either one will work equally well. So we're going to get just a few drops of this barium chloride. And um, you're going to see that a white precipitate is going to form. We're going to put a little bit more in just so I can get a clear view of this white precipitate forming. So the equation looks like this. And any soluble barium salt plus any soluble sulfate will form a white dense barium sulfate precipitate as shown ahead, I mean here. So as you can see in the equation we have barium plus a sulfate which will yield barium sulfate, solid precipitate. So our last anion today is going to be nitrate. Now this test is a little bit dangerous so just take some precaution. Um, here's our nitrate. We're going to be getting clean scoopula. Just scoop a little bit of the nitrate out of the container. Just a little bit. Sometimes it can be a little hard to get. Um, just take a little bit. I'm going to put that aside. And we're going to use iron 2 sulfate. Just put a few drops. It's this lovely yellow color. Just put a few drops in there. Now, the next item we're going to be using is concentrated sulfuric acid. Now, this sulfuric acid is extremely, extremely dangerous. I cannot stress how cautious you have to be with this. So we're actually going to go to the fume hood just to prevent any accidents from happening. So here we go. <laughs> yeah. OK. So, we're going to get a few drops of the sulfuric acid. Make sure to keep the test tube in the rack so you don't get any on your hand if you're holding it. Just put a few drops. Just, and now, this test is called the brown ring test. Now, why is it called the brown ring test? Well, I'm going to show you right now. It's called the brown ring test because look, oh, there's a brown ring that forms. But why does this brown ring form? Well. When the two liquids meet, the brown ring forms because the nitrate anions are reduced to nitrogen monoxide, NO, and the nitrogen monoxide will then react with the iron two cations to form a brown compound, which is this.
Okay, so here are all six anions that we tested for today. So if you ever want to know what an anion is, you don't know what it is, just perform one of these tests that we've shown you, and you can figure out what it is. So thank you so much for watching with us today, 